All right, today we're going to take a Death Trooper face mask and a quick review and show you how I did this customization on the desk. All right, I just picked up the Star Wars Rogue One Imperial Death Trooper uh, voice changer mask, I believe. Yeah, so I'm going to unbox this and do a quick review on the basic product. And then I am going to modify this. I'm going to basically build the backside of the mask. So we'll see how that works out. If it doesn't work out, then it probably won't be in the video because it'll be a disaster. It'll just be a review. Weird. Now, before I go any further, I'm going to take a paper towel with some alcohol, rubbing alcohol, and I'm going to wipe out the inside of this here just because I have no idea whose face or mouth has been in this thing while it was on display at the store. There's all kinds of smudges and stuff inside that, yeah, I just don't trust this. Okay. Well, the detail is pretty good on it, and the weathering isn't great, but it's terrible. The fact that this lights up is pretty cool. Okay, so here it is on me, and I'll turn it on here. It doesn't really seem to do much as far as affecting the voice. This is as far as I can tell. I don't know if you can tell much of a difference when I'm talking with this on or not. But yeah, that's about the extent of what it does. It just amplifies your voice. But it is cool that it does light up green. Okay, and to get to the actual battery pack, you have to pop this piece here off of the top. And you will need a Phillips head screwdriver. Looks like a small tipped one to get this out to get to the actual batteries. Okay, so to make this back part of the mask, first of all I had to find something that was round and close enough to the same size. Uh, really what I'm concerned with is the curve and the back of this comes pretty flat to here and this is pretty much where I'm going to stop my pattern. And to make my pattern I'm going to take duct tape. Uh, you don't need to use hard duct tape, just any duct tape. I'm going to take duct tape and I'm going to cover this and grab a Sharpie and draw out a pattern. So I'll be back here in a second after I put some duct tape on this. 
One of the nice things about this is there is a seam right down the middle, so I have a nice straight edge where I know where the center is going to be. I'm just going to work my duct tape on and smooth it out until it's flat. Like that. Okay, you can see here I got it all taped off. And this is the back side. So I want this to be straight. Just going to follow my seam here. Give myself a guideline as to where to cut it after I pull this off. Okay. So that's for your back side. Now using the actual mask here as somewhat of a guide, I'm going to want to match up with here. I'm going to start my line here. So I don't want this helmet to be too long and ungainly. Okay. My curve is going to stop about here on the helmet. So I'm going to go ahead and put a line there. It's going to represent the end of the curve. Okay. So that's pretty much the basic pattern. What I'm going to do is take this off. I'm going to cut along these lines here, straighten it up somewhat. Once I peeled it off, I stuck some saran wrap to it, but you can use an old grocery bag or anything. This will help so that your duct tape pattern doesn't stick together and get completely ruined and you'll have to start all over. All right next, I'm going to cut along all the lines here. Okay, now that the pattern's all cut out, I'm going to take a look at it here and match it up not only to the helmet. Okay, I think the curve is going to come down just right once I match this up. But I need to check in the mirror, put it up to my head to make sure that it's going to fit before I draw my final pattern on the EVA foam, which we're going to be shaping the back of the helmet out of. And the reason why I'm going to do this is if it's not long enough, then it's just not going to fit right. It's going to look silly. It's going to be ridiculous. So I'm going to check that out and then I'm going to come back and what you're going to do with this what you figure out the size you need is you're going to flatten it out. Now it's not going to want to go flat because it has this curvature in it. So what you're going to have to do is, in certain areas, you're going to have to take a pair of scissors and put a little slit so that it will lay flat. Just like this. And you can see here that when I push it down, it's flat. But then you have all these V's. And you're literally going to draw these V's into the EVA foam. You'll see here in a minute. After I draw my pattern and show it to you guys, and you're going to end up gluing those back together to begin to give it the curve. And the rest of the smooth curvature out of the EVA foam, you're going to have to get from heating and shaping it by hand. Okay, so next step, I took this and shoot a regular old felt tip pen and traced out a pattern. Okay, I'm probably going to extend this at least a few millimeters here in the front because I think I could use a little bit more room. And now that I've done that, that's basically the right side. All you have to do is flip this over and trace it again upside down and that'll be your left side. And that gives you both sides of the back of your helmet. All right, now that I got the left and the right side cut out, I'm gonna go back through and using some contact cement, I'm gonna glue these together to start to give it some of that dome shape back. Just gonna apply some contact cements, these little V spots here on the inside. And then I'm gonna go ahead and let that sit for 15 minutes and I'm gonna stick all of them together. Okay, you can see here I've taken the left one and I've already put it together. Okay, and both the left and the right pieces you can probably still see my thumbprints. I didn't apply any heat to the foam. I just took my hands and gently pulled and worked the foam to give it a slight curve. That way, whenever I put it together, it already starts to have somewhat of a decent shape. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing to the right one.
contacts met at the right and left sides together. And I've already started to use a heat gun and just kind of form this out and make it a little bit more rounded. And for a reference here to show you guys what I'm, what I'm doing so far, I've taped this on there. I'm going to continue to shape this out and get it to fit nice and snug. And then I'm going to start making some of the other pieces for it. Okay, so I kind of lucked out here in measuring this that the actual length of this 5 millimeter thick EVA craft foam is only slightly longer than this. So I measured out a piece. That is going to go from the top and hang down enough because I am going to make this curved piece here to go around the back and the bottom of it but I need something to attach it to so I didn't want it to be too long or too short but I wanted it just long enough that there is some overlap here that way after I attach the dome and this to the mask itself I'll have something on the bottom here to glue this to which is going to be glued across the bottom here but first, before I take this and glue it to it, I'll explain what I did. I just cut off a section as wide as I wanted it. Had it come up here a little bit in the back. I have a slight scoop here. Dips down about six millimeters in the center. And I angled these slightly. Like this. And the reason is, when it goes on, it'll have a slight bell shape that'll come out a little bit at an angle. And once I glue all this together, you'll have a much better idea of what I mean. Okay, and if you just Google Death Trooper helmets, you will see... If you can find a picture at the back of them, which I'm certain you can, there's all kinds of pictures on Google Images. There's these square cutouts and these two rectangle bars. Well, technically three, but I'm only putting in two. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut those out with an X-Acto knife. Okay, so I've taken and cut out all the rectangles that I've drawn, and I glued a piece of real thin 2 millimeter EVA foam in there. I'm going to put some contact cement on these edges here, and then I'm going to glue these two pieces together and show them to you before I heat them. Alright, so I have glued all the pieces together here, and I still just have this duct taped on for demonstration. And you'll notice here some of the stuff I've drawn in this is to help me line it up whenever I glue it all together. And this actual section this actual section right here is going to be cut out and recessed to match up with this recess that starts right there. And I'm going to build up a piece to match the circular piece sticking out here. And of course, once I glue this on, I'm going to then start working on this curved bottom part. It's going to go all the way around the bottom of the helmet. Then you'll look on the other side of the helmet. There's this piece here sticking off of it. I'm going to have to, of course, build and finish the rest of that once I glue this on. And before I glue it on, these straps here are going to have to go. I'm going to cut all three of them off and sand around this edge here and in through here just to rough it up a little bit so that the glue hopefully will stick a little better to this plastic. And I'm going to go ahead and glue this on. Right, so I've taken some 320 grit sandpaper and you see I just sort of sanded this flush and roughed this up. Since these are all the surfaces I'm going to be gluing to. And I did remove this top panel that covers the battery pack. You don't want your foam gluing to this, otherwise you won't be able to get this out. And then you won't be able to replace the batteries. If you really wanted to go all out, you could probably remove the battery pack and put it somewhere else in the mask. 
Uh, if you really wanted to rewire and solder things, I don't. And I also took and put, see here, a small notch in the battery pack so that I can get my fingernail in there and pop it out. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and glue this to it. All right, here it is. Try I've gotten it glued on. Fits pretty flush. And I also took on the inside and ran a bead of hot glue around it. And you can see I've also put in the recessed piece here. And all these seams and little wedge, little cut marks from the little wedges that you had to fold together. I'm going to sand all that and silicone it. You don't have to do that, but I think you'll see by the time that it's done how much better it looks. You'll probably want to do it. And the next thing I'm going to do is take a look at my reference photo because I still need to do this piece. And I need to make this bottom part that goes around the back here on both sides. And this little visor extension thing here, whatever this is, this has to be finished. And I need to go back and consult my reference photos for all of that. All right, I've taken a strip of EVA foam. Uh, it wasn't quite long enough, so I had to glue this little piece here on the end and extend it a little bit. And I just simply cut it as wide as this. And then using some heat, you can see my fingernail marks here. I was stretching it, pulling it this way with my hands to get it into this round shape. And now I'm going to go ahead and glue that on. And that will form the bottom piece here. That wraps around the bottom. All right, I've glued on this bottom piece that I made out of a strip of foam that I heated and curved. And I used contact cement to attach it to everything. And then I went through with some hot glue a lot of hot glue actually and sealed this up really well and part of the reason I used so much is this was not straight the whole thing was kind of twisted off to one side and I held the mask in place with this hand where I wanted it and just added the hot glue and waited for it to cool and it pretty much pulled the mask into shape and into place the way that I wanted it so it's all even and yeah Next, I'm going to start working on some of the details in here, like finishing the other half of this little gray circular area here. Uh, these circles here is just to remind me to put a flathead screw in. It doesn't actually do anything, it's just for show. And this line here, I'm going to score in with a razor blade or X Acto knife. And then, of course, on this side. I need to get working on this piece. All right, so I took some scrap five millimeter and three millimeter, uh, three millimeter pieces and just extended this side piece off here. I'm gonna go ahead and contact cement this in place. Uh, I just drew based off of a reference photo. I didn't show this because judging by the reference photo, I would probably have to cut this very bottom piece here, this little tab here off altogether. And I didn't want to go through all that. So I just went ahead and matched this up with what was already existing. So this isn't really exactly like the actual helmet, but I'm building off what I already have here. So I just took what was there and extended it. All right, now this is all glued on. You're going to notice there's a lot of seams here. Here, in between where the foam's joined together, on this edge, down here. Now, to save myself some time, uh, because what I'm going to have to do is either I'm going to leave this looking all ugly, and that's not going to look good, or I could go through with some Bondo, or some silicone, or plaster, or anything, really, and smooth this all out and even it all out, but... That's just an awful lot of work. I happen to have some packaging plastic and I just trimmed it to fit here. 
I'm going to go ahead and glue this in place over it. That way when I plasti dip this and paint it, it'll have a nice, smooth, even look without having to do all that work and spending all that time. All right, I've begun to go ahead and seal up the inside seams here with just a thin bead of hot glue. And this will help make sure everything's sturdy and held together and doesn't move. And I finished this off by adding several pieces of the plastic that I cut to size over areas like here to help cover up the seams so I don't have to do as much cover up work later. I also put one on the back side here as well. So that'll make it a lot easier. All I have to do for the most part is just plastic up that. And once I finish sealing these seams, I'm going to work on the detail on this side. And once the detail over here is done, we're going to go ahead and head on to siliconing this thing. Okay, so here's the progress so far. And one of the initial modifications you'll probably notice is I had to put a little strip in between here to make all this fit. I don't know if I mentioned that or not. But I pretty much have all the detail work done. I put a plastic piece in over here. I did finish the circular part here that's raised, you can see, and I put another plastic piece over top just to avoid some more silicone work. I cut a line into here with the X-Acto knife and then hit it with the heat gun to help it to expand. I've also heated all the foam to seal it and smooth it out as much as possible. I've sealed all the inside seams with the hot glue and now I'm going to take some 320 grit sandpaper and I'm going to start sanding all this smooth. And the areas I'm going to pay attention to especially are going to be these seams here because I want to work out this as much as possible. And after I sand all this down, I'm going to go ahead and start spreading silicone over all this. Alright, now that this has all been sanded as smooth as possible, I'm going to start siliconing. And the silicone I use is actually an acrylic silicone with latex. It's from a company called DAP, and it comes in a big caulking tube and goes in a caulking gun. But I just put it in the gun and put it all in a Tupperware, and I just apply it with my finger. And after I apply it, I smooth it out with some water, just regular old tap water. And you don't want to put on too much. I feel like it's always better to go at a millimeter at a time than to get too much and to have to start all over again. I'm going to really try to press it into the cracks as much as possible and get a nice even layer. If you can do that, it's going to look so much better so much more quickly. Okay, you can see here I work it into the cracks first. And then I put a thicker layer. Smear it over on top of that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and apply some more of this and come back and show you what I do with the water. Okay, it only took me about a minute or so to apply this. You need to do it pretty quickly because it will start to dry. And what I'm going to do is I wet my finger, dipping it in the water. I just start to smooth it out. Since this is acrylic, it's basically water based. And you can just get your finger wet and smooth out all your silicone work. Just try to get it as smooth as possible. Let that dry for about 24 hours once you do the whole thing like this with the same process. Then I'm going to go back and sand it. Alright, I've gone through and done all the seams with the silicone. 
all the way around all the places where I don't want it. And now all that's left to do is wait. And once all this fully dries, I'm going to go ahead and sand all this smooth. And sometimes things will look rough and they're not. And sometimes things will look smooth and they're not. So once you do your sanding on all your silicone areas and try to get it even and smooth, feel it with your fingers. And if you feel a ridge or a bump or a lump or whatever, you need to do some more sanding or maybe apply some more silicone and then wait until that is dried fully and then sand it again. Now, this is pretty ugly, but we're going to mask this off after we sand it. And that's where Plastidip and some high gloss Valspar black lacquer is going to come in to hopefully give it a nice shine that will match this front here. I've gone ahead and applied my second layer of silicone and while I'm waiting for that to dry so I can sand it, I just took some masking tape and a couple layers of saran wrap and I masked off the front part of the mask where I don't want the Plastidip or the paint to get on. And was careful to get up right to the line here, the battery pack, which you can see I did not silicone that. I left that open, unlike all the rest of this, is all filled in. Once this dries, I'll sand it and we'll move on to plastic dipping. Okay, so just as I apply the silicone very thin, I also sand it rather slowly and meticulously. If you rub back and forth really hard, sometimes the silicone will tear. So I generally just go one direction slowly and I'm just very patient about it. So far I've been sanding this for about 20 minutes. It's probably going to take at least 20 more to get it all smooth and evened out the way that I want it. And as soon as I get that done it'll be plastic dip time. Alright, I've got safety goggles, a mask here for painting. I can of black plastic dip. You see, I've already masked this off and I've finished sanding this. And I also took a plastic grocery bag and covered my mannequin head so I don't get anything on it. And let's get to plastic dipping. So I want to put a nice, thin, even coat. Not too much, but not too little. And then you can repeat this as many times as you feel necessary. Just continue like that till the whole thing's sprayed. Let that dry for at least a few hours in between coats and put, apply as many coats as you like. And there it is after the first coat of plastic dip. Everything I think looks so much better. Whenever you have it a uniform color you can still see some of the foam color there so you have to give it another coat or two. But once I get done coating it we'll come back and spray paint it with the black high gloss lacquer. Okay so after my first initial plastic dip I noticed some areas that weren't quite as smooth as I'd like. So I went through and did some sanding and added a little bit more silicone. And I'm going to do one more layer of the plastic dip. Same as before. Nice and light. You don't want it too thick. If you get it too thick, you will get runs. And you'll also get areas that, instead of seeing the detail, it will end up choking out the detail. Always be sure to keep your can at least one foot away. Make nice and even strokes back and forth. Always be careful not to over apply it. Only ever put enough on.
Okay. We'll let that dry. And then I'm going to come back and lacquer this. So I'm not 100% sure if I've talked about this before or not, but I always take odorless mineral spirits and I'll dampen the end of a paper towel. And then I will use that to clean off the nozzle on the plastic dip and the spray paint. This will help it from clogging, from spitting and sputtering, and just in general making a mess of your project. Uh, I didn't realize this or right away. And I would get halfway through a can of Plastid Dip after a few uses, it would just start coming out looking awful on my projects. And I eventually figured out it was a spray nozzle. Alright, now that my Plastid Dip is dried, I'm going to go ahead and use some of this Valspar lacquer. I just want to put on in a really nice thin even coat okay and I'm gonna go through and give it two coats of the lacquer and then I'll let that dry and we'll come out back and see how it looks ready so this is done now I did go through and mask off the eyepiece and phase some of this black lacquer from this part here into here just so it matched up a little better and then I did go through and do two quick thin coats of Valspar high gloss clear lacquer just so the whole thing has a consistent shine okay so here's what the finished helmet looks like uh, wearing it didn't turn out quite exactly as good as I wanted but it's pretty good and since I'm not actually making this for a full cosplay I'm not really like super disappointed with it one problem that did occur with this it was something that actually happened with the Kylo Ren Black Series uh, helmet, which is that they have this little cone in here so it reflects the sound into the microphone and it causes feedback. And most people just take that out. Uh, and they end up putting a little bit of like pillow batting or the type of foam they use in couch cushions over it just so that we'll maybe muffle and stifle some of that. I'll turn it on here so you can get an idea of how it sounds whenever I. So you can hear that little bit of like sharp sound, that feedback that goes along with it. So I may do something to cover that up. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope everything was helpful and gives you some new ideas of what to do as far as cosplay. And as always, thank you for watching and may the force be with you.